Hey y'all, hope you're doing well today. So in today's message, I wanna have a conversation, a discussion about um, facts, beliefs, um, what our part is, what God's part is, and um, also how words are so sneaky because they're actually, <clears throat> as the meanings have morphed and changed over time throughout history, it's like they have become uh, standalone symbols or you might say labels that just prompt this automatic assumption within our mind as to the meaning, okay? And that's a problem, <laughs> that's a big problem um, because it's like it, they, they serve to create this, this automatic focus on the wrong meaning sometimes. And so, um, <clears throat> let me share with you, um, hmm, first of all, since I mentioned labels and how words can serve as labels, let me, men let me mention the, uh, the um, meaning of label. And I looked this up on the online etymology dictionary. Y'all know it's my favorite. Um, it, it, it referred to a label as a narrow band or strip. And I thought that was really important because I'm always encouraging us to expand our minds and to, to expand our perceptions, um, especially as we just navigate this, this crazy reality and we're trying to observe and learn and grow, keeping that expansiveness in our mind with regards to um, just taking things in is so crucial. And so that's, that's what I'm trying to highlight here, that we need to be careful that we're not um, unconsciously just so zoned in and, and, and zoomed in and focused on, um, on the wrong automatic assumption when we hear a word. Because I, I believe that the results are disastrous in our lives. And that, that's again why I just love that Bible verse that says um, that wisdom is the principal thing and with all of our getting, we're supposed to get understanding. So I'm gonna mention a lot of Bible verses today um, and uh, there's gonna be a lot of discussion just on um, <clears throat> um, just the meaning of different words as well. But I hope that you will hang with me and listen to the message regardless of your beliefs. Um, because it's um, hopefully very meaningful for all of us. I think it is. And so I just encourage you always to apply your own filter, your own lens perception, and just see what you can get from the message. So again, I hope you're doing well today. And um, I hope to bring you some insight and some encouragement as well, right? Because we all have, um, let, me just, let me just start the discussion with this. We all have things that we, we hope for in this life. We all have dreams and goals, and um, we kind of have a general idea sometimes of how we'd like our life to play out. And, um, you know, it gets tough at times and challenging, and if we're not careful, as you know, <laughs> um, it, we can um, find ourselves in the midst of um, trials and, and challenging times where we're struggling to keep that hope alive you know, for better times and for, you know, um, just our, our dreams that we've always held on to, it's, it's kind of hard to keep holding on to those sometimes. So I'm, I'm hoping to give you some insight today that will help you with regards to all that. Okay, this is just, again, work that I've done um, in researching for myself, and it just brings me joy to share this with y'all, and I hope that you can find value in it. So let's move forward. Um, I'm going to share with you <clears throat> Colossians chapter 3 verses 9 and 10. We're going to read that together. Um, so let me pull this up here and find it. <clears throat> okay, so it says, lie not to one another, <laughs> right? Obviously, <laughs> those of us with goodness in our heart, we, we certainly, um, we don't have to work at that. You know what I mean? But it's, let's just, let's just go with it and read it. So again, verse nine, lie, lie not to one another, okay? Or lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So this is gonna be a key point throughout um, our message today is that sometimes like there's just a big, uh, golden nugget or big big truth that's just you know kind of tucked away within um, 
a verse, just like here. I'm what I'm focusing on intentionally is where it says renewed in knowledge. Okay, so when we put on the new man, because verse 10 says, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. So here we have instruction on how to um, to operate as this, this new person, right? You may say born again, um, or um, uh, someone who has come into, you know, a, a new awareness or who has awakened, right? And so um, I view that the verse nine, when it says lie not um, to another, or a one to another. In other words, I can also expand on that and say, you know, as we're leaving behind um, our old self, not only, you know, I hope that a person who really is operating by lying, I certainly hope that, you know, everyone at some point, you know, comes to the, the light and understands they don't have to operate that way. I certainly hope that for everyone. Um, <clears throat> but I'm on the flip side of things, you know, where I've experienced what it's like to be lied to. And so, um, I just think that as we're coming out of an old way of life into a new way of life, we're leaving behind a seat altogether. Whether we have um, just just um, trusted, blindly trusted people, um, and, and not just necessarily people, but just um, like the meanings of words without doing our own research to really see, is this really what this means? And, you know, to where we didn't really value or understand the necessity of, of knowledge to such a degree. It's like putting off this old man. A big part of that is leaving behind a seat, you know, whether a person was engaged in it or whether you were a victim of it. So you're sharpening your discernment so that, you know, we don't want to be a victim anymore of deceit. You know what I mean? But part of that renewal as the new man, right? A woman, person is to be renewed in knowledge. So that's what we're really going to be inspired by today as we go through um, everything that I've written down. So <clears throat> yeah, and then I also want to mention, um, you know, I found it interesting that the title of uh, Colossians chapter 3 is His Sovereign Will. You know, it's not God's will for us to be enmeshed or entangled in deceit. It's just not. But it's... Um, it's kind of like, it's hard, isn't it? It's kind of like we, we remember that verse that says all things work for the good of those who love him. You know, he, he ensures that. But I'm personally not of the belief that that evil or bad things come from God. Um, he allows it because he could stop it all at any time, obviously, right? Um, because as the creator of all things, Alpha and Omega, but he, he allows it to continue, but it's for a purpose. So even though he allows it to continue, it doesn't mean that it comes from him. And in fact, there's a Bible verse that states, you know, that he is all good and there's nothing bad in him. So um, if I can find that, I'll drop that in here too. But um, <clears throat> yeah, his sovereign will, his sovereign will, um, we are encouraged to partake in... Um, what you might call, you know, paradise on earth um, or a, a way of living that brings about peace. Um, we are encouraged to, to do our part in that. And I'm going to tie in what I mentioned in the opening of this video, which is, you know, um, what is our part in making our dreams come true? See, um, knowledge, understanding, you know, things is a crucial, crucial part to all of this. Living in peace, um, living in harmony with, with God's will, um, and, and learning how, discerning how to avoid or leave behind deceit in all its ways. Okay, so as part of, um, <clears throat> you know, hoping for things. I want to mention James chapter 2, verse 26, um, which says, um, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Okay? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. <clears throat> you know, in the past, I've always taken this to mean that, <clears throat> you know, if we just 
hope for things, but we do nothing about it, it's not going to happen. You know, like faith without works, without us doing some kind of works, is just not going to bring anything about. But I want to do a deep dive on that today, okay? Um, you know, when we think about language, <clears throat> especially how it's morphed, and I would even propose been manipulated over the many years, um, I really feel like it might just be our biggest stumbling block to knowledge. And again, knowledge is required to be renewed, right? Per the verse that we read earlier. It's part of being a, a new person, right? Um, in your new awareness. <clears throat> so, um, you know, what are we desiring so much and working for so hard um, after suffering some really hard stuff? What's like the main thing you're looking for as you're coming out of a really hard time? I would propose it's renewal. It's, it's to be refreshed and renewed and to find safety and peace, right? Um, so again, knowledge is, is very, very important here. Okay, so um, let's dig into some language, okay? <clears throat> um, I opened by talking about how we're gonna we're gonna be discussing facts and beliefs, God's part, our part, and how that relates to you know making dreams come true and you know hope and faith. Um, when you look up the the term fact in the online etymology dictionary, so check this out. Okay, I thought this was really interesting. The term fact from the 1530s it means an action, a thing performed. Anything done, a deed. So, you know, when you think about that word thrown around in today's society, fact. Um, <laughs> how, how often are we expected to just take something in as fact when it wasn't a first-hand experience? It wasn't something that we performed ourselves or a deed that we directly observed, you know, in first person, or, or first hand. I just, you know, I, I've personally come into the realization that it's almost like as part of operating in modern society, I feel like we're kind of expected, it's like an unspoken rule, I feel like we're just expected to accept things as fact when we have no proof for them other than just blindly trusting the person telling us <coughs> who has been designated an authority. You see what I'm saying? It's something to think about, truly. It's something to consider. Um, and then this was really interesting with regards to the term fact. Um, from the 16th and 17th century, which is from, um, well, the 16th century is from 1501 to 1600. It was commonly used, the, the term fact, to mean an evil deed or a crime. So, wow, I thought that was incredible. Um, just something to chew on, you know what I mean? And then from uh, 1400 to 1450, um, the medieval Latin term uh, referencing fact meant state, condition, or circumstance. Again, very, very interesting. Um, and then if we look up the term works, works, right? Because again, faith without works is dead. Um, works means deeds, acts, and actions. So here we have a, a correlation between fact and works, okay? This is important when we're talking about faith and knowledge and how renewal comes from knowledge and the, the part that faith plays um, in creating our reality or manifesting what we desire, the deepest desires of our heart. So we have fact meaning an action or a deed or something performed and we have works meaning deeds, acts, and actions. Okay? So again, faith without works is dead. Um, <clears throat> from the 12th century, which is 1101 to 1200, isn't that incredible? That's preserved. To me it is. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the term work meant scholarly labor, physical effort or exertion. 
scholarly labor, okay? Um, faith without works is dead. Faith without scholarly labor is dead, without research to be renewed. You see how all this is tie starting to tie together? It, it gets better, so just hang in there. Um, let me just ask you this. How often are we waiting to resume our faith? Or how often are we questioning the point of staying hopeful because there's no proof of anything happening in the direction that we'd like to see? Whatever it is that you're hoping for, that you're longing for in life, that you feel like you need, that you would just really love to have, you know, whether it's material or, you know, a relationship or a particular outcome in a, in a certain circumstance or whatever it is. Um, how, how often are we just kind of in this mode of waiting and wishing and longing, right? Um, and it's, it, it gets to the point sometimes of, I mean, let's just be honest where it's kind of hard to keep your, your hope alive, you know, because there's just nothing nothing happening. You don't see anything happening. There's no proof manifesting, you know, that, that things are going in the right direction sometimes, right? Sometimes so, but sometimes not. Um, have we stopped to realize that it's us that has to do the work? All right, so this is a good illustration of operating from a victim mindset versus an empowered mindset, okay? And <clears throat> so, essentially, if we aren't doing anything to make our dreams come true, it's kind of like, they're, are they really going to come true if we're not doing anything to help out along? Um, and I just want to pause here and say, you know, we need to give ourselves some grace because, um, you know, our, our trials and our tough times we've been through um, may have tried to strip us of our power um, by conditioning us to have this victim mindset, okay? So don't, don't just pile on top of that and just, you know, blame yourself if you, you know, find yourself like that sometimes, you know? It's not easy to maintain faith and hope, you know, all the time, 24-7, 365. It's not that easy, right? It's one of those things that's easier said than done. But I just encourage you to view these hard times as as a trial, you know, just um, each one of them, just a, another trial. Um, <clears throat> you know, if, if we come to the place where we're viewing these hard times that way truly, if we can just fully, if we can fully understand that we can't be fully stripped of our power, that being totally stripped of our power would actually be an illusion if we could somehow understand this then we can hang on to hope even if only a thread or a mustard seed and I want to just encourage you if you've never read the book it's very relevant right here with, with regards to this point okay um, it's called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl um, I'm just going to be honest with you. It was not an enjoyable read for me at all. It was a hard read for me. Um, that being said, it was it was easy to read and a fast read for me. Um, and a very, very impactful and meaningful read for me. But it was hard stuff um, just in detail. And so I'm going to go ahead and warn you there. But it leaves, it leaves you with um, a really important lesson that is from a true story. And so, um, I love true stories. I love it. I love to um, learn from other people. And this is really important when I'm talking about, you know, just, just keeping a mustard seed of faith, how important that is um, in pulling us through those trials and those hard times, okay? <clears throat> um, let me just go ahead and reference here. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So this is important. Let's take a look at these words, okay? Faith is the substance and evidence, okay? So um, it was also interesting to look at the, uh, the version of that verse um, through the Geneva Bible, which is, you know, pretty old from the 1500s, I believe. It says, faith is the grounds of right? Instead of substance, it uses the term grounds, which I think that sounds like a starting point, see? Almost like faith is needed, 
you know, it's that foundation for things hoped for, right? Now, let's take it even deeper. I loved this. I loved finding this next part. I can't wait to share it with you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I looked up the term substance from the Online Etymology Dictionary from the 1300s. Substance means the divine part or essence. How amazing is that? Now let's read that verse again. Faith is the substance. Faith is the divine part or essence of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So if faith is the substance and substance means the divine part or essence. I want to take a look at Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 and 21. We're going to read this together. <clears throat> For truly I tell you, if you have the faith or the substance or the divine part, the divine spark inside of you, for truly, I tell you, if you have the divine spark inside of you, the size of a mustard seed, <clears throat> you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. See? See the difference in reading this verse with an understanding of faith being one way? Kind of like you know, just hope, empty hope that you just have to just struggle to try and, and just muster up within yourself versus faith as divine essence within you because now you're partnering with the Alpha and Omega. Now you're partnering with something bigger than yourself that also has its hands on everything else in this whole entire creation. You see the difference? You see the power? When I talk about going from a victim mindset to an empowered mindset, that's part of being re renewed. That's part of putting off the old man, which is to see. It's a lie that you are a victim. Like forever and ever and ever. I mean, yeah, on the small scale, we may have gone through some stuff and actually literally been a victim of psychological abuse or whatever it was, but that's not your identity. To make that your identity is part of the deceit of this reality. See, you are actually, you have the option to, to live empowered, but it requires a divine spark within you, right? Partnering with the divine essence. You know, that's why I'm so drawn to, um, you know, looking through different lenses to fully grasp myself and fully understand what it means to, um, to have that divine essence as, as um, part of me, to operate through the divine essence or spark, right? Um, which is a choice because we have free will, you know what I mean? Um, but just, you know, looking through all these different lenses, like, you know, traversing the underworld, um, <clears throat> going on the hero's journey, walking the path, all the different ways you can look at it, right? Um, essentially, that treasure is um, a cosmic marriage with the divine. It's being reborn. It's, it's partnering with um, the higher power, the Alpha and Omega. Okay, so it's this substance that is required. <clears throat> but here's what's cool, okay? Not just for any dreams to come true, but good and fruitful dreams to come true. Have you ever looked back on your life and thought, man, I'm glad that didn't work out the way I wanted it to? <laughs> <coughs> I know I have. <coughs> um, you know, when you're operating from a, a limited viewpoint, you can't see the whole picture. Sometimes you think you, you know what you want, but you're, um, and you can be pretty tore up if it don't work out, you know, that way. But then, you know, down the road in the future, you can look back, you know, from this viewpoint in the future, you can turn and look back and be like, oh, man, you know, I just, I had no idea, you know. <clears throat> but, um, but I want 
here's something really important. I want us to just notice how much the word substance has an automatic like reference protocol, you might say, in our minds to mean something physical. When I hear that term, I think of something physical. Substance, you know, you can touch it, see it, right? When in reality, one of the older meanings was divine essence, right? <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, just notice that. I want you to, you know, this is what I'm going to do. And I just encourage you to just, um, you know, there's a Bible verse that talks about taking all thoughts captive. And essentially what that means is just capturing, you know, before you take something in, <clears throat> it's kind of like recognizing that we do have this automatic, like we've been conditioned to... Um, operate in this such a way that that um, we hear words and they just register automatically as, as meaning one thing. If we could just capture them like in the in the moment and take them captive as the Bible verse you know instructs us to, then we can examine it. We can zoom in and focus and examine it before we take it in and say, "Hang on a second. Before I take this in and it just automatically becomes part of you know my truths, you know." If you're just really concerned about deceit and staying totally, you know, untangled from it, right? That's important. It's an important part. <clears throat> so, you know, I feel like we are all unknowingly suffering from, like, this syndrome of corruption, um, like, within our language. And, but, and it keeps us stuck, see? Uh, that's what I mean when I say a, a stumbling block. It's like we're, we're stuck, but we don't realize it. And, you know, what do we do? We self-blame. We think that it's our fault. Things aren't working out the way we, we had hoped for, see. So, when, when you hear people talk about it being a spiritual war, you know, and good and evil, good versus evil, remember that the Bible says that we were battling not, we're struggling not against flesh and blood, but against um, principalities, Right? And this is the kind of stuff that that's going to help us to win in this spiritual warfare because wisdom is the principal thing. Understanding is going to help us to win the battle in our minds. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> it's almost like our mind, you might say, might, if you personify that, like we love to do with regards to archetypal psychology, if we personify the mind itself, we might say that the mind could serve as the gatekeeper to the soul, to keep the soul preserved and safe, the spirit, maybe even. See? So, we want to keep that gatekeeper role healthy. We want to keep our mind healthy and not contaminated. You know what I'm saying? With some destructive bacteria, you know? Um, or... Um, <clears throat> virus or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's just really important for us to remember that knowledge is required for renewal, right? It's essential. Um, so we need to identify it for what it is, um, how language is, is, um, has been kind of uh, infiltrated and exploited in itself. Um, if we can identify that, then we can understand it's, it's position or its place in this big web or game of deceit that we're just swimming through day in and day out. You see what I'm saying? Because um, if we can identify it, these, these things like, you know, these automatic assumptions with regards to, to words, you know, um, labels or whatever, if we can just identify it, and capture it, then it's like we're choosing not to play the game anymore. We're not playing along with what's expected of us to just buy into um, deceit or half-truths. You know what I mean? All this matters. It matters with regards to spiritual warfare. <clears throat> so, um, you know, our goal should be to wake up and to stay awake and yes, it takes effort to continually protect yourself or your mind from all the deceit <clears throat> because it is so richly woven in our reality. You know, deceit is like a slow poison. That's the thing. 
all right? <clears throat> Romans chapter 3, verse 13 says, Their tongues practice deceit. The poison. Okay, I can't read my own writing, y'all. The poison of vipers is on their lips. So, again, if we remember when I opened the message talking about words or kind of acting as labels, um, which, again, a label meaning a narrow strip, um, I found this interesting. From the early 15th century, um, looking up the etymology of label, it means a strip attached to a document to hold a seal. Did you catch that? A strip attached to a document to hold a seal. So, <laughs> when we dig deep in our search for knowledge, because wisdom is the principal thing, right? And we want to be renewed. It's like we're breaking seals. We're opening seals. Isn't that incredible? You might think of it that way through the spiritual lens, okay? <clears throat> um, I would definitely say for sure doing this work is, is akin to removing attachments, you know, that are incorrect or the parasites or the bacteria or whatever you want to call it. Um, the elements of deceit, that's what we're removing, okay? They have created a degraded state. Now why? Why has this happened to our language? <clears throat> I don't know, but we can certainly say that it does. <clears throat> it does result in something. It hides the true meaning, that's for sure. It doesn't take a lot of digging to, to find that out either, you know? So let's take a look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. It says, Let us not become weary in doing good. <laughs> For at the proper time, we will, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So I see our primary work is continually raising our perspective on the daily. Elevating our perspective high enough to transcend the conditioning to focus on uh, <clears throat> preconceptions. And it does require sacrificing our time and our energy, um, separating truth out of deceit. It's kind of like panning for gold. You know, you got all this mud and dirt you got to slosh through, you know? It's work, right? It's effort. Uh, but we are supposed to monitor everything that we take in, okay? Um, and it's one thing to hear, which is kind of like an automatic thing, right? You can't help but to hear. You can't help but to, you know, be exposed to so much in this reality. But it's another to listen. See? When we listen, there's a, there's a filtration. There's a check point here. Okay? Filtration is happening. When we listen, we are discerning. We are scanning and choosing what to take in and what to put over here and check on and look into, see. We're paying attention. <laughs> it requires paying attention and not being distracted, see, by the past or by anything. <coughs> <coughs> Distractions are everywhere, right? So, um, I don't believe that truth can be destroyed. I believe it can only be covered up. Think about Adam and Eve wearing the fig leaves. You know, it's kind of like when you view that, it's like truth is still out here in this world, but it's just, you know, hidden. It's, it's, there's been all this, you know, BS just piled up on top of it. It's hard to see it. Okay. So it's like washing mud, you know, off of jewels or chiseling this ice block, right? To reveal, you know, whatever's frozen in the middle, but it's there. That's the thing. That's what's amazing. This is how God always has the upper hand. Because if you think about it, <clears throat> when something is buried, it's preserved. If something is frozen, it's preserved. I'm reminded of my dad talking about, you know, he was raised by his grandparents. And uh, they grew their own food. 
and they would um, make these mounds of dirt, you know, for um, to grow their potatoes. You just stick your potatoes in there, and they would just sprout, you know, and make more. <laughs> and so, um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of times that's how they would pres preserve some of their food over the winter. And so, um, even like, you know, covering up meat and salt, you know. So when something is covered up, it's still there. And furthermore, it's preserved. But you gotta work at getting down to the core. You know what I mean? Um, so again, truth is there, it's just preserved. We have to work to get to it in the middle of all the BS, right? So our work is to get understanding. And I feel like, it, you know, the more knowledge we get, the more wisdom we get, and we work at the understanding piece, it does take effort. That, that should give us direction as far as what to hope for so that we're not investing our energy and our time, right, which is energy in itself, right, our thought energy, our um, <coughs> just our attention, so that we're not investing all that on the wrong things or in the wrong direction. So understanding is going to make sure that we're, you know, recalibrated and we're focusing in the right direction. Okay, so again, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And remember that substance is faith, which is the divine essence. Okay, if we have the divine spark inside and we're doing the principal thing, we're getting understanding. Okay, because remember, faith without works is dead. Then we will see the unseen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You following me? We will see the unseen. Check this out. <clears throat> I looked up the word evidence in the online etymology dictionary. And um, <clears throat> it says plainly see. When you look up evident, it means plainly see, perceive, and manifest. If we look at the Latin roots... We have ex vadir, okay? Evident, ex vadir. Now, the way Latin words, when you break them apart, it's kind of like they're flip flopped, you know, as far as the meaning. The latter part comes first in the meaning, and then the first part that's written comes last in the meaning. Um, <clears throat> there's other languages like that as well. So, ex vadir. So, ex means out or fully, vadir means to see. So it means <clears throat> ex vidir. Vidir is to see. Ex is out fully, to see out or to see fully. So let's look at this verse again. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the divine essence of things hoped for. To fully see. To fully see out things that are not seen. Because with God, the divine essence, see, all things are possible. <clears throat> so just some more, um, another example of this, this backwards um, way that Latin can work um, with evident expedir right to see out fully we also have um i just wanted to pull another example for you right um proof there's um vidalicet v-i-d-e-l-i-c-e-t so we have um lacet which is the last part of the word it is allowed and then vidir to see or it is permitted to be seen right so see how that works so again we have evident Right, expedir to see out, to see out fully. All right. <clears throat> also, the word evidence from the 1590s means one who furnishes testimony. You'll have a testimony, you'll be a witness. We will witness things not seen, we will give testimony to things as they manifest, we will co create with the divine spark, which is faith, right? And we will see the things hoped for. 
So I hope that this encourages you. I hope that it got the wheels turning and I hope that it was very inspirational. It was for me. Um, I hope that it touches you in some way. And I just um, hope that you have a beautiful day. <coughs> Excuse me, I wanna thank you for coming along to hear the message and I will see you again very soon.